So what are you making of these numbers and what are they telling you? Well, I think we are definitely seeing some softening in terms of the marginal data point, uh, which should not be surprising given the pickup in daily COVID cases, as well as the tighter containment measures. But if the debate is about whether this will derail uh, China's growth recovery, our view is still firmly no. Uh, we believe that China's growth this year will be robust uh, and we are at uh, above consensus 9%. And the reason for that is simple. If you look at the broader context of things, I think China's containment efforts are still much more effective than anywhere else uh, we have seen in other parts of the world. Uh, and because they have been able to contain COVID-19 much better, if you look at the industrial side of the economy, Exports have been soaring. Uh, in fact, China saw the largest gains in terms of global export share compared to other, any other economies in the world, um, thanks to exports of medical equipment and electronics equipment. And of course, not forgetting the fact that um, if you think about the, uh, the way private sector would respond to COVID, I would imagine that the impact on private sector domestic demand would not be as severe as what we saw in the early part of last year, uh, given that private sector would already have adapted to the new COVID normal. And we've kind of seen this in the Korea and the Hong Kong data points as well. Um, services segment, uh, one would imagine, would be the most impacted from tighter containment measures. But even in Korea and Taiwan, uh, Hong Kong, um, we have not quite seen a queue on queue decline in uh, services segment too. Uh, and maybe I'll just also add that one has to also bear in mind that there's still a lot of policy support in the system. Uh, Chinese households have access savings to the tune of something like 6 to 7% of disposable income yet to be spent, uh, which we think can help to support the economy going forward. Well, of course, at this time of year, all the data is a, a bit muddied, isn't it, as we head into the Chinese Lunar New Year. How does that Lunar New Year vary from other years? And how, how crucial is it that things actually perhaps return to normal after it more so than usual? Well, I think um, the way we tend to kind of strip out the CMY volatility is to look at the gen that average. And that is what we typically do for any economy which celebrates uh, uh, Chinese New Year. Um, and I think that this time now, it's also important to do that. Um, and then besides, one has to also remember that uh, COVID really emerged in China early part of last year. So there's very significant low base effects, which will also be present in the headline uh, year on year numbers as well. So by and large, I would say that we will need to average the numbers to get a better sense of what's uh, transpiring on that front. Uh, but overall, our sense is even if there is a Q on Q moderation, which one would, which would be reasonable at this point of the cycle, we don't think that uh, the year on year growth trajectory would be derailed uh, for China. But having said that, Dayi, there's been a sharp drop in employment in the manufacturing and non-manufacturing sector. That could mean uh, consumption could be impacted. Why shouldn't we be worried about that? Well, uh, we are not particularly fond of using the labour market conditions as a leading indicator for consumption. In fact, I think that labour market conditions is at best a coincident indicator or even a lagging indicator. And the reason I say that is because if you think about the way corporates uh, uh, increase or reduce headcount, they typically lag the cycle. They don't reduce headcount until it becomes very evident that the slowdown uh, is really entrenched because it will be difficult to rehire if the slowdown turns out to be shortlisted. Um, so, and actually, as it stands right now, despite the fact that job listing numbers are in double digit decline, the reality is China's retail sales have already returned to pre COVID levels. Um, hence my comment that labour market conditions are lagging. And going forward, as I, as I alluded to earlier on, um, households are sitting on excess savings to the tune of 6 to 7% of disposable income yet to be dispersed. And as confidence picked up, I think that they will be ready to spend this in the economy and loosen their purse strings. Dayi, turning to India, all eyes on the budget expected later this afternoon. Uh, just wondering, are you expecting the government to be more tolerant of a budget deficit that's wider than 3%? Uh, yes, we think so. I think the way we would think about it is, given where we are in the cycle, and given the fact that this slowdown has been one which is driven by pan pandemic, where there's still a lot of lingering uncertainty, uh, I don't think policymakers would be in a hurry to withdraw policy uh, support abruptly. So when I think about what would transpire on the fiscal policy front, we expect to see very gradual fiscal consolidation. Uh, we suspect that the central uh, government budget deficit 
for fiscal year 2022 will probably still in a range of 5.5% of GDP, just slightly down from the 7% of GDP uh, that uh, is likely to have come through for fiscal year 2021. How do you think the government can fix the broken labour market? Um, I think ultimately it boils down to providing policy support where it's needed in both the short term as well as the longer term. And I guess for the shorter term, if I think about what they will do on the expenditure fund, clearly providing support to the vulnerable parts of the economy, the SMEs, um, to keep viable businesses afloat, this would still continue to be an important part of uh, the budget in order to keep labour market conditions healthy. And I guess uh, looking further out, um, I think focusing on infrastructure, trying to revive the manufacturing industry, capitalize on FDI relocation, that's something policymakers will also be looking to do. Uh, because after all, uh, last year, uh, they did corporate uh, income tax cuts. They put in place a lot of production link incentive schemes. All of this has had pretty good results in terms of attracting uh, manufacturing capex to come to India. So I suspect that they will follow up uh, this with uh, more infrastructure spending, which generally will also have a longer-term multiplier effect on the economy and help to uh, lift employment markets as well. Uh, Day, I want to just turn uh, to Thailand. We've got a Bank of Thailand decision coming uh, midweek. It, it, no change expected, but they've got very, very, uh, they've got very concerned about what's been happening with the, t the with the BART there. Now, what's driven the BART up so much? Given that one of the biggest drivers of that economy is tourism, and it ain't happening. Yeah, that's a good question. So, actually, if you look at the services balance. Services uh, surplus have actually already declined uh, because tourism arrivals have slowed down to a trickle. But what's still supporting the current account surplus is the fact that um, there has been quite a bit of gold trading and gold exports. So that part has gone up. Uh, imports has fallen because of the collapse in domestic demand. And of course, not forgetting the fact that investors are kind of looking at Thailand as a safe haven when it comes to debt market instruments. So we have seen inflows on that fund as well which is helping to support the BART uh, strength. But uh, in terms of what this would mean for the policy rate, I suspect that um, BOT will not be keen to use policy rate cuts um, to try to temper against the BART strength. The reason is because we already have policy rate sitting at effective lower bound, uh, and policy rate is a very blunt tool when it comes to managing the, pol uh, the, the currency. I suspect that uh, when it comes to ma managing the currency, they would instead look towards direct effects intervention or measures to manage capital flows, or even you know the government will have to consider more aggressive fiscal stimulus, uh, increasing uh, infrastructure and thereby imports uh, to try to temper the current account surplus that we are seeing right. in Thailand right now.